I'm about to show you an easy way to boost your audience retention in your videos. Audio Design Desk has all the power of a DAW, allowing you to add in high quality sounds and compositions to your tutorials, reviews, or vlog style content, where you can lay down sound effects using only computer keyboard, switch out virtually any sound for something similar on the fly using the built-in metadata, and captivate your audience with groundbreaking transitions and foley. Now every now and again, I like to share with you guys how you can do what I'm doing. And this tool has been so game-changing for me that I had to show it off. And seeing as how it's focused around audio, I thought it'd be a perfect fit for this channel. So without further ado, Let's build out our first project together. All right, so truth be told, I did record my initial test using Audio Design Desk, but the footage got corrupted. So that is awesome, but now I've actually got a lot more experience using it, and I can really teach you guys what I know now. Everything happens for a reason. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, what I can do over here, there's actually already a video on my channel and a review about WaveTool, in which case I stripped out all the music and all the sound effects just so I can have it for this video as a test. So there's just my dialogue and my screen capture. And for my videos, as well as any really intro on YouTube, this is your chance to really get the audience engaged in the content to come. So in my intros, I use a lot of movement to keep the user engaged and interested in the hook. That's slow zooms like this right here, fast ones like this, we've got transitions, zoom ins, wipes, and then some things that can release some sound effects over here, like some typing. So let's focus on the intro for today's test and get started right at the beginning. One thing I've been experimenting with is actually adding an impact straight in the first frame of the video. Which one really cool feature about Audio Design Desk is that all I have to do is hit H for hit. This could be the best AI tool. Now that's not really to my liking, so all I have to do is highlight it, command right, and then it picks a different one like that. It's that easy to really find and cycle different sounds. This could be the best AI. That's perfect. More like a stomp like that. That sounds really good. In fact, I actually really like that hit, so I can double click on it and then start down in the bottom. And immediately after that, I need a riser up until the frame changes right here. And now all we have to do is hit R, and we've got a riser. Try and match the volume of the impact, probably. This could be the best AI tool for music production right now. This entire that's actually really good. And now, as you can see right here, there's going to be a line exactly where I wanted that frame to be. All of these sounds from Audio Design Desk will have a point of impact, so you don't need to worry about where the peak of the riser is or the transition, and you can easily switch out sounds from that one point. That is what makes things very easy in this program. Now, fortunately, I really like this one right off the bat, so I don't need to change that. I actually don't want to have this tail over here, which I can hit C and delete. I need music. In fact, even the demo pack has some pretty good soundtracks here. I'm going to click on full mix right here, and I want something more like action or suspenseful. This one could work. Okay, that could be the spot that I want. Again, intros are very fast paced, so this could be more of like what I'm looking for right there. In fact, I actually might chop it up and like almost sample it a little bit. Okay, so right here, I think I wanna pick up the pace once we get into the screen recording like that. And you can zoom in to really get some fine points right here. There we go, okay. So I don't want it to come in quite yet though. Very easy to fix, all I have to do is use the F tool over here for fade, and then fade it on in just like that. This could be the best AI tool for music production right now. This entire DAW has AI integration. Okay, moving on a little bit more over here, it's more complex stuff. So I think that our next opportunity to add some sound effects is going to be at the transition right here as well, right there. We can go on over to, I think it's sound design, element, transitions, and whoosh, okay. If you're ever curious on one, you can double click on it and then hear it down over here. I like this one a lot right here. All right, now one amazing quality of life thing over here, because we've got the point of attack right here, that impact right there, when I move this around, it'll actually change in the video preview as well at that attack point. So I think I want to finish right around there to the track and way more. Wave tool comes with a built, but then after we bring that in, we very quickly need to zoom in like that, which we can also use a different type of whoosh. Having some variety is always good. Or wave tool comes with a built, yeah, perfect, okay. Then we could add something like a button being clicked right there, sounds pretty good. So in the demo pack over here, there's also a button one right there, which I could use these, but although the video is not sponsored by Audio Design Desk, they did give me a small trial run for the pro version, so I was able to download a few different packs that more fit my style. So I totally forgot what I'm looking for over here. Um, very easy to find though, going to the search tab. Okay, so it's part of a different sort of pack. Yeah, it is, okay, awesome. Try that one on out. Tool comes with a built-in. We'll get one more whoosh just in case. And then also, I don't want that to be really drag out, so we'll go and do something like that. Built-in chatbot that will assist you with any- Yeah, that's good. Okay, so over here, I'm gonna need some typing sounds. I'm not looking for one hit, I'm looking for a lot of typing. That's gonna be good. Sound of the program. Just type- It's a little bit too loud though, which I can hit shift down to go and lower the volume by two decibels. And then while holding option, drag on over, we'll copy it. Program. Just type something into the prompt and watch it go to work. It Perfect, that actually almost lines up perfectly. But now after the typing and transition, the, the AI is now thinking for a second, right? Which I have the perfect thing down over here, grabbing that one, putting it back down to the sound effects track. Actually, I've already added quite a bit over here. Let's go and see what everything sounds like right now. This could be the best AI tool for music production right now. This entire DAW has AI integration, which allows you to generate MIDI, set up a mixing chain, master the track, and way more. Wave tool comes with a built-in chatbot that will assist you with anything inside of the program. Just type something into the prompt and watch it go to work in real time as it applies changes straight to your track or it will even give you advice. 
Okay, so as you can see from here on out, I might add some more whooshes, but I'll literally just be going over here and then hitting alt, finding the spot, and then doing the same thing I've already taught you guys. Let's move on a little bit further on in the video. So here's where the intro ends going into the actual content of the video. This is going to be a great way to really change up the pace. Now, intros are very high pace to keep the user engaged. Just as important as learning to pick up the pace, you've got to learn how to really dial things down a little bit, make the video more enjoyable to watch, which there's a great opportunity right here. I'm gonna grab one of the big whooshes over here because not everything is as it seems. All right, so this is w that wasn't even close <laughs> as it seems. All right, so this is w better. All right, so this transition right here is a little bit longer. It starts like right there. You can't really hear the transition until like right here. So hitting E will be the stretch tool. So if I pull this on over a little bit more, it'll actually make that a bit longer. It seems. All right, so this is wave. But the point of impact for the transition will be hitting C and deleting it right there. I want a different track now. Maybe something more suspenseful. That's gonna be perfect. It really slows down the tempo with the track right there. And then also because with the four to the floor pattern, adding more suspense, like what's gonna happen. But now we'll be building out the rest of this intro over here. Again, just copying and pasting a few things here and there to match up with the edits that I made in my video. But then I'll go over it with you guys and see what we did. So our project is off to a solid start. I especially like how easy it is to switch out sounds on the fly to find the perfect one that you're looking for. Now when getting to learn any new program, there can be a bit of a learning curve until you start to get really efficient with it. But everything is so intuitive here that after only a couple of weeks, I've really started to get the hang of things. The keyboard shortcuts are nice and easy, and I'm starting to learn all the sounds and the packs that I'm using one at a time. Now, let's see how our project is looking. The intro is pretty much good the way that we had it before. I added a few more different whooshes over here to go along with the, the edits. Straight off the bat over here, go into chatbot, clicking the button right there. Let's start off with a simple chord progression. Can you make me a simple triad chord progression in E minor? This is actually a different typing sample right here than what we had in the intro. Now the intro is so fast paced and I sped up the footage to where it's like, it doesn't really have to time up with what's on the screen. Program. Just type something into the prompt and watch and it still flows perfectly fine. But something that's happening natural in real time should sync up a little bit more. So I actually chopped it up so it would match more what's happening on screen. Make me a simple triad chord progression in E minor. And, and that sounds pretty good to me. I think it flows pretty seamlessly. And I do this scene a couple more different times over here. So what I all I did was actually just held the option button and then dragged it over to where I wanted it and then it makes a copy of it. Move it around to what seems more natural on screen. And so long as it starts and stops in the same places and has some spaces in between like that, you should be, it should be fine. Okay, now for this part over here with the ambiance over here, it's going to be some more room tone, okay? And the reason why is I'm saying some pretty, <laughs> some pretty sus stuff in, in this scene. So I want to cut out all the music, all the dialogue and make it seem like I'm boosting the typing. What's in turn would also boost the other notes going on in my room like white noise fans from a computer or a monitor anything like that that's basically what room tone is however this microphone is so damn good and my editing software there's not a whole lot of room tone that i could really boost but i wanted to give the effect that there was room tone so i added some of my own over here using audio design desk and real quick this sample actually had a little bit of high end that i did not want so to get rid of that high end i actually put on some fab filter pro q3 which is a great point to mention that you can use a lot of your third party vsts in here like from cable guys cymatics fab filter freak show the majority of third party vsts should work inside of audio design desk which i think is really really cool because being a music producer i've gotten accustomed to using these plugins i know how to use them very easily and they're very powerful tools to have so here's how that scene plays out now mix Oh, this is so stupid. Now, here's one of my most favorite things to do inside of Audio Design Desk. I like to break apart my videos every few minutes or so, whether it be with a title or with some narration, like how I bounce over to this scene over here. And normally I would just automate some background music to come more to the foreground for the animation and then go back down. But with so much more audio at my disposal now, I was able to do a lot more. It's basically my thoughts on this right now. So here I am thinking I just wasted all this time on this bust of a DAW. Okay, so that sounds really good. And there's nothing wrong with the way that I was doing it before. I think it just adds a lot more depth and does things that not everyone else is doing. And here's how I did it. So basically just a hit right here, an impact. A riser. And then basically just some texture to go along on the undertones. Very simple and something that I definitely would not have done without using this program. Okay, so truth be told, I did not do a whole lot more to this project. And the reason for that is I still have the initial project of learning to use Audio Design Desk using the same video to test out as the one that we did in this video. So here's the intro compared to the last one that we made. Be the best AI tool for music production right now. Or Wave Tool comes with a built-in chatbot that will assist you with anything inside of the program. Just type something into the prompt and watch it go to work in real time as it applies changes straight to your track or will even give you advice on how to proceed. So what it looks like is I actually forgot to add more typing 
clipping animation. This is a different audio file, but everything else is pretty much the same. Different impact and different riser. I actually like what we made better in the video here today. And what I do notice is that being more inexperienced in this program at the time, uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of the, the audio levels that I did. Some things are quieter than they should be when they should be more impactful and some things are a little bit too loud. It's all about trial and error and making things sound more smooth and cohesive. So down over here is going to be the music. Okay, so like this sound selection, it's okay. You know, it's like the best one I... So basically what you're hearing is not a fully mixed out track. You are hearing A, some drums. And then B, I think it's just a pad, right? Almost, yeah. That is what's so great inside of Audio Design Desk and makes you think about things differently. Now, yes, I could be using stems in any video editing software, but because this is all dedicated to audio, I want to do the most that I can inside of this program. And it makes it so easy. Over here, you can see that I have different loops, the, the bass, the beats, the chords, fills, effects, everything that you would need to actually make a full track on your own. Combine different elements and make a track that's uniquely your own in your video. Because you can take different beats from different songs and pair with a different chord progression or a different melody, like a lead, and really make a track that no one else is using. So again, still very much in the beginning stages of learning this program. The transition here, although is definitely not bad, but does not have nearly as much sound effects. Which is okay, and it definitely doesn't sound bad, but I think that what I'm doing now with adding sound effects, hits, risers, texture, actually makes it much more impactful and engaging. Here, even in the same project, I started thinking and experimenting more with those transitions. Really cool at the same time. This was actually one of the most fun processes of making music that I've had in a while. You can already see the progression that I've had with audio just in this one project alone. Okay, so how we mentioned earlier about stems, right? Once again, this musical element right here is just going to be a stem of a pad, which can really help change up the vibes of your video. Seeing the, the beats, like the time that's gonna to take to do the delay, really helped out with like a slap. There are times where I just don't like how empty a video can feel, but also don't wanna be pulling focus from what I'm saying. Also because all of my content has music inside of the video itself and the content, I just have to cut in and out my audio tracks right here, which can be kind of annoying if it's always just drums going out through the entire time. So using stems for like melody or even just atmosphere can really help out with that. But then on the total contrast over here, this is going to be stems of just the drums. Variety for the melody, and I, it didn't really do a whole lot from there. Once again, adds a little bit more energy, but it's not taking up too much space, taking away from what I'm saying or distracting the viewer. I do have a lot of variety over here for the music with between drum stems, pad stems, fully mixed songs, a lot more variation that I usually put inside of one video. But I wanted to show you guys just how much music and stems can change the way that your videos feel. Okay, so here's what the actual finished project file looks like, but we are definitely not done. I do have one more different thing to show you guys. I feel like our intro has a much better chance now of hooking our audience after using Audio Design Desk. Not only that, but we scan through different parts of the video to find other opportunities to add sound effects that match our edits. And now that's all done, there are a couple different ways here to export the project file. If you are using Final Cut Pro, you're in luck, because Audio Design Desk integrates seamlessly with Final Cut Pro. Now, unfortunate for this case, I don't use Final Cut Pro, I use Premiere Pro. It's okay, we've got a few different options here for exports as well. Some people may like to have the most flexibility for their audio, which in general is me as well. There are options to export every single track that's own waveform. Or if you're not too worried about that, you can export everything all as one file. That's actually the way that I prefer to do it. For me, I don't like to have a huge clutter project file for video editing, so having it all as just one audio file, yes, I'm losing out some flexibility here, but you can still chop up that one audio file and change up some volumes here and there if you wanted to, as well as a lot of the levels would have been done inside of Audio Design Desk either way. So for YouTube videos at least, this is the option that I prefer to use. But I did lie to you guys about one thing. I mentioned that this was an easy way to boost audience retention. As intuitive as this program is, like everything, it's going to take time and effort to get better at. Learning all the sounds, shortcuts, and experimenting with different things, audio can be a very tricky skill to learn that people build careers off of. So whenever you're trying to get better at something, it's going to take time. But I really don't think there's another program out there with this much flexibility in what it offers that I would rather learn with or from. So take your time and experiment. Now with all that being said, we've still got one more project to look at. And that's going to be a video that is already on my channel as well on the new YouTube Jam Boost plugin. And that is just me completely using Audio Design Desk completely in my own new workflow, which was so much fun to actually just cut loose and do whatever I wanted. Once again, the most captivating part of any video should really be the intro. So let's hear what that sounds like without my, my audio playing up here.
So this is actually a technique that I use a lot back in my older videos that I haven't really done in a while, but everything from the start up until right here is going to be a coming up feature. An exciting part of the video, getting the audience excited for what's to come. I use this to go along with the text graphic. Now this audio sample right here is the exact same as right here, but they sound a bit different. Which all I did there was right click, go over to mixing, effects, and then went down minus one semitone in the pitch. That's all that I really did to give it more of a start and a finish. But then notice once we get to that drop right there, I don't start the music right away. I start fading it in into another transition right here. One more thing that I definitely would not have done or even thought of instead of my video editing software. Then finding different places to add clicks. For the introduction of the plugin, I did something I've never done before. I cut out the music completely and had an impact riser transition and everything and I think it paired together really, really well. Creating that space and giving everything room to breathe and then immediately getting rid of it and intruding on that space really helps take the listener by surprise. I had the idea to include the plugin as like a notification coming up from a computer, which these paired with very well. And once again, from the intro into the content, I added some transitions over here, but because we're so close to having to cut out the audio anyway for the music from the screen recording, I did not start up a new musical track which I would not have really had that option if I didn't have these sound effects. So now that we got through the individual parts of the intro over here, let's hear it all the way through. That sounds really cool too. That sounds really good actually. There are multiple ways to add rises to your track. You can take a cymbal crash and reverse that leading up to the drop, add the reverse reverb trick to one of your instruments in your track, or go the opposite way with some down lifters or impacts. But now with the new U-Jam Boost plugin, you can create high quality rises out of anything. This multi-effects plugin makes it very easy to add risers, impacts, texture, chair melodies, and even drums all within one place. So without further ado, let's get into the plugin. For today's demo, we'll be going to a track that I've already made called Patience. All of that just sounds so cohesive and really, really is what I was looking for. And then also something really cool over here, I did something very new as well inside of my editing, and I really like took away FL Studio and had just the plugin with something in the background over there, which I, th I found a sound effect that paired it like unrealistically well. Like that is so insane, like how well that worked out. Okay, now here's time for the outro, which I once again experimented a lot with the transitions, but then also built out basically my own brand new song, as short as it is, using different stems from a pad to an electronic drum kit, massive bass, and a synth. And here's the really cool part, to get everything on beat. After the transition, I added just a fill to get into the actual track. So now it's time for our final thoughts on the plugin. So although this plugin's claim to fame is going to be adding risers and impacts to your track, so I guarantee nobody else on YouTube will have this exact track. Even if they're using Audio Design Desk and have the same sound pack that I do, I created this out and tracked it out myself. So it's almost like you're sampling your own song for your video. You can create full-on compositions in here. This right here is a BPM counter. At 120, you can change it up or down, snap to grids, and then also a stretch tool to put it on beat. It would be very easy to create your own track in here. Now I must say, even after only doing a handful of projects, I think this is going to be my preferred way to lay down audio for my videos. And the reason for that is it has changed the way that I like to create videos. Not just with the audio, but even the recording process and the edits even. The fact that it's based solely around audio makes me want to do the most with it when I have it open. Experiment with different techniques and add even more edits to my videos, that way I've got more sound effects to lay down. It truly has changed the way that I look at creating videos as a whole. And I'm still just scratching the surface here. Obviously for this video, I want to focus more on the YouTube video side of things, but there are people doing a lot of great things around rescoring movies, trailers, TV shows, and that's something that I'm very excited to get into as well. And all of that is possible with the Audio Design Desk.